everyone, this is Theme Park Squib and welcome to another show. Got a lot to talk about this week, so let's get straight into it. Let's get into news. news. First thing I'm going to talk about what I saw had changed at my visit to Alton Towers at the weekend. We only went there for a short time so we could listen to the England v Sweden game. But I did go for their short time, mainly to do Wicker Man again. It's a really good high-class roller coaster. But the main reason was this subterra building work that's been going on. I don't know what's going on. We don't know. I have anything confirmed. It's either something for Scarefest or next year's new big attraction. Because the yellow tent, I saw the famous yellow tent that was the first thing to pop up. Then the black scaffolding had a little pier in the scaffolding. It doesn't look like work's going on in there because there's no proper construction fences and you could just get over the fence and walk in there. But there's like some fences going in that looks like a queue and there's a mannequin. I do not know what that mannequin is doing in there, but there's a mannequin. So the next update is, so first it was rumours, yellow tent, big black scaffolding and now a mannequin so we don't know what's going on with that building hopefully it's not a removal hopefully it's a new attraction i hope it's a new attraction for next year because those drop rides really need to get used and i hope it's not a scarefest maze because knowing scarefest it will be like five pound entry into it like the other mazes last year it worked out 25 quid if you wanted to do all the mazes also wicker man the fire is not working the fire on its shoulders haven't been on for the last god knows when. People have been saying that Merlin, when they open, that Merlin should keep on top of the theming. They're trying to let that slip. Is it budget or is it with the heat? We're getting some lovely weather here in the UK at the moment. But I don't know what's going on with that. But the pre-show is still amazing. And so is the whole ride, the queue, the experience of Wicker Man. And even the shop is such a good experience. Had a bit of... Issues when we were there. Three rides kept closing and breaking down when we got to them. We command was fine. Got to the front of 13, broke down, was in there for half an hour, got back on it. Nothing has changed on there. Went on Oblivion for its 20th birthday and got to the front, about to sit down until we were told to go back into another lane as there was a guest illness. So I don't want to go into any detail about that. And then we had to wait even longer because they had to clean that, send that one, the other way gates, the bundle we weren't in went in, and then we went in, so we even waited even longer. And Nemesis sat down, pulled the bars down, Nemesis broke down, they had to get our bars off and our bags were in the hole, we got our bags and we got given a free fast pass. But we didn't use the fast pass because all the rides we didn't do in the day were on there and the only ones that were on the fast pass that we didn't do were Galactica 13 and Smiler. Galactica broke down when we were having our lunch outside it and we couldn't be bothered to walk all the way up to retail as we were making it our last attraction. We were going to make this ride our last attraction so we were going to go on the Smiler. That was break, it broke down when we were walking up there, so we just went on Spinball Wizard instead, which had a 10 minute queue, which is a surprise for that attraction, as it always gets very busy of families, and it's the throughputs of the attraction are really bad throughputs. Also, I forgot to talk about last week, Toy Story Land, that's opened in Disney Hollywood Studios over in Florida, or some people have been calling it for the last couple of years, Disney's Construction Land, as half the park went with Street to America, Batlock Tour, Lights, Motors Action, and the Great Movie Ride all went for the massive renovation of this park. Toy Story Land was the first phase. This is a fantastic area. It looks really well themed to shrink you down to a size of a toy. It has came along with two new rides and a new entrance slash queue for an old attraction. It has also came with a restaurant and some new toilets. The restaurant is called Woody's Lunchbox, which is actually sponsored by Baby Bell, as there are huge Baby Bells that you can actually sit on for the restaurant. The ride that got the new entrance and queue is Toy Story Midway Mania that's now been moved from Pixar Studios over into Toy Story Land and that looks a lot better and Mr Potato Head, the famous animatronic that has had quite a lot of problems if you look online and search Mr Potato Head Disneyland uh, animatronic fail where he picked his ear off and dropped it and they cannot pick him back up again. But the area comes with two new rides, a family flat ride, which is these classic whip rides at Disney, these flat whip rides that Disney have been putting in, in quite a lot of their parks, uh, such as Maker's Junkyard Jamboree over in 
Cars Land in Disney's California Adventure. They are this whip ride. We have the Alien Swirling Saucers attraction, which is themed for the aliens. And that is actually going to be coming to Toy Story Playland in Walt Disney Studios in Paris for the big expansion there, which is going to be very nice to see that attraction come as Toy Story Playland does need another ride. The new coaster in the area, a, fa a Mac family launch coaster called Slinky Dog Dash. This looks very well themed and looks like a very good family coaster. And what I'm going to say is Chessington really need to get a Mac family launch coaster. I think it will work perfectly on that big grass area opposite Dragon's Fury, which has been left there for ages. And I think a Mac family launch would be perfect for Chessington. That's it for news this week. Let's get into merchandise. With the merchandise, we are going to be showing you some Oblivion merchandise for its amazing 20th birthday. As you think of it, Oblivion was the world's first vertical drop roller coaster. If we never had Oblivion, we would never have had such amazing rides out there in the world, such as Saw the Ride, Rage, which is at my local park, we would ne uh, Adventure Island. We'll never have some amazing dive coasters such as Valraven, Sheikra, and the brand new Valkyrie. We would never have any of those rides if it wasn't for this coaster. First, I did get the mug, which is this new style of mug that they started doing at Alton. They're quite. Um, they are what they do on the smaller rides, such as Jewel, Modern and Mine Train, Congo, River Rapids. So it's black inside, black handle, it's got this very nice logo with like the, the hull of Oblivion with 20 and the O is the Oblivion sign, which is really nice. As Nemesis didn't celebrate his 20th birthday, it did celebrate his 21st back in 2015, where they changed the on the, all the Nemesis logos, the I and S, the S and I were changed round on Nemesis logo. Also, I did get the T-shirt, which is black and has the same design of that Oblivion 20 on it, which I think this is the branding, very nice branding, I think it's nice branding to celebrate 20 years of a roller coaster. Also, the tag on the Oblivion T-shirt is not an Oblivion tag. It is Oblivion the Black Hole, which was a dive coaster opening Gardland back in 2015, which is a park in Italy that Merlin do own. That is not Oblivion, that is Oblivion the Black Hole. Maybe, it's probably not linking to a rename of Oblivion, it's probably just budget cuts, as all the t-shirts for Oblivion did have Oblivion the Black Hole labels. That's it for merchandise this week, let's get into Guess the Ride. We can guess the ride, or oh, the last week's Guess the Ride, that is Vampire, a fantastic family coaster at Chessington World Adventures Resort. Chessington really need a new coaster, and I think a family launch would be fantastic for Chessington. And maybe they could theme it to like the jungle, I think it would be a great addition if they do go down that route in the future, as it will bring more guests in and... I would love to see a family launch in this country because we haven't got one yet. This week's guest ride is a ride that opened in 2000, so the millennium, in the UK and it is of a coma madhouse and was designed by Jonathan Wardley and was based around a legend. If you know what that ride is, put it down in the comments down below and you'll get a shout out in next week's shout out section of the show. Let's get into shout outs. Let's get straight into the shout outs. First we had the guest ride which was Vampire from Connor Hollins, James Beaver, Theme Park Mag Magic and Theme Park Merlin. Well done for getting the ride correct. But next we have the comment YouTube comments from Sloffy Vlogs and the Corey Turner Show. Thank you for commenting. Next we have the Twitter likes and retweets from TJ and Park Boys. Thank you for liking and retweeting. Also, I've got to say we are now at 172 subscribers. So since last week, we have now passed the 170 subscribers mark. I would hope soon we will get to 180, but I would love nearly soon we will get 200 subscribers, which will be a fantastic milestone. Also, the countdown has begun to the big Europe trip that we are doing in summer. Only a couple of weeks to go now, just under a month, we'll be going to Fantasia Land, 
Wallaby Holland and Wallaby Belgium. I can't wait, it'll be the biggest trip we've ever done on the channel. Thank you for watching this week's episode of the show. Make sure to like, comment and subscribe and like us on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram. Also, guest a ride and subscribe as I really want to hit 180 subscribers and even more want to hit 200. That's it for this week. Bye!